hello and welcome back to my channel which you see in front of you is a Charles Wysocki puzzle this one is called Remington the Horticulturist as you can see the title there all of his I have a lot of uh, Charles Wysocki cats puzzles I think maybe seven or eight of them and they are all 750 pieces as you can see the piece count there uh, this the piece count is not so much of a challenge, but the puzzle itself with the old-fashioned type of rusty type of things in the picture might be a bit challenging. Um, yesterday I put on Instagram and Facebook three puzzles for people to suggest to me to which one to do. I chose a Colin Thompson puzzle, an Amy Stewart puzzle, and this one, and this one got 98% of the votes, so we're going to go with this one. And I thought while I stopped putting the separating the pieces of this puzzle and at least put the end together in this video, I will tell you about some of the things that I've been doing since I've done a puzzle in chat. Now, I'm going to ask Echo to turn the light on and hopefully you won't get too much of a glare. Echo, light on. So I'll try to keep the glare out of the puzzle area. So what I do, as I think I mentioned this in a previous video, video, is I pull all the edge pieces out that I can, and then I separate. So let's lift this up so you can kind of see what I'm doing. I separate, let me get the iPad out the way. I separate the pieces by mostly by shape and sometimes by color so since this picture is full of old-fashioned things I'm just going to start pulling things out by shape and then once I get all the edge pieces put together I will work on sorting some things out by color so I pull out different shapes I want to lift it up a little bit more so you see this shape here with that funny end and then this shape here with the three at the top you can barely see it three at the top and empty at the bottom so they would go in two separate uh, containers and then of course any edge pieces like you see here I'll put over there and so I start to as I start to sort it out I thought I would tell you what's been going on as I mentioned um, I have been very, very busy. I have not only have I think I have gotten out of my reading slump, even though I think I'm only at 27 books for 27, 28 books for October, I, I am out of my reading slump. Um, I'm back to devouring books and uh, when, what you hear me reaching for and dropping is more trays as I come up with a different color piece, a different type piece. So I just grabbed another tray for that. So I basically have been dividing my time between a very difficult jigsaw puzzle, which I uploaded everywhere yesterday, and also... Um, I completed the diamond painting. I put Marge Podge on it, so I need for it to set. And um, for right now, I'm just going to hang it up with the others that are hanging up. One I did buy a frame for, and it's one that I intend on gifting. But um, the other two, including the one that I literally just finished, like, excuse me, 15 minutes ago, that one I'm not quite so sure what whether I'm going to gift it or not. So on my puzzle table, I have a lot of trays within my reach, but I need at least one more tray and I'm setting it on my end table. So this past week, I the week before last, I was able to read eight books and that was pretty good considering the fact the week before that I read 12 books, but then the week before that week I read eight. So my reading is going up and down, up and down. So on my 
Facebook page and on some Facebook groups, I summarize the eight books that I read. Um, I end my week on Saturday. And Saturday was, uh, what day was Saturday? I'm trying to get the calendar, the 24th. So usually when I record my books, I go until midnight of, um, I go until midnight Saturday, and that's how I track what I read. I'm just trying to make sure you can see what my hands are doing. So those eight books, um, one was the third book in the trilogy. It was called This Fragile Heart by Kate Hewitt. Now, I read the first two books the previous week, which were uh, The Heart Goes On in Her Rebel Heart, and then um, at the beginning of last week, I read Her Fragile Heart excuse me, This Fragile Heart. And it was a really nice uh, series. It was a trilogy, so it's not, there aren't going to be any more stories. As a matter of fact, I'm going to move faster because as I'm talking, I'm just barely touching the pieces. So I'm, I'm going to speed up a little bit. Um, so um, it was, it was, like I said, it was a, it was a reprint and the trilogy is complete, and it was basically about a family who, in uh, it was a historical fiction about a family who went through a lot of trials in order to find a way to uh, make their lives happy and to find contentment. And it also went through se several generations of family. So, like for example, the f the first cup, the couple in the first book were parents of four children by the second book and the, by the third book they were grandparents and that's pretty much how the, st the book series went. It was a really good series and I haven't written any of these reviews yet. Then I read a duology or it might be more in the series um, by Carly Bloom, Big Bad Cowboy and Cowboy Come Home. Um, those were print books that I got from Forever and uh, Forever sends me about 10 to 12 books a month. And so I try to read at least three or four every month. Um, so that was a, a typical cowboy romance. Um, both I gave four stars to. Both very, very good books. And I, I really enjoyed them. There was a little bit of heat to them. Um, and I, I liked them. And then I read two Amish fiction books. One was Light Shines on Promise Lodge, and that was by Charlotte Hubbard. And that was about, it's it, I believe it was a second or third book in the series, so I don't really know the other characters, but at some point, a few of the women in an Amish church uh, left because of being unhappiness and they didn't leave the church they left the area that they were living in and they started a lodge and they ha all had businesses they all were married by the time I got to them in this book and then there was one character who is pretty much the principal character in in, in light shines on promise lodge who was living there and uh, she was separated from her husband. Her husband up and left her. He seemed unhappy with the Amish faith and so she made it on her own. She had her own little business and she was doing just fine. Well, her husband shows up one day and declares that he wants her back. And what's more is wherever they were living before then, he was really disenchanted with the fact that she wasn't there waiting for him whenever he was ready to come back. So um, that's part of the story. The other part of the story is uh, somebody that comes to the Promise Lodge or to that area where that Amish church is, which had its own bishop and elders and deacons and so forth and so on. I mean, they were all Amish. They were just a little bit more progressive than some of the old Amish are or were. Well, someone comes, I think his name was Clayton, yes, Clayton, and he, he said he was from the Council of Bishops, and he was there to do a report on them because they were far too progressive, and they weren't following the tenets of the Amish church. 
So he creates a lot of chaos, and those were the two stories. The story of um, uh, the woman and her husband, her husband's name was Phineas, um, whether or not they were going to get back together, and whether or not the Council of Churches was going to upset the balance that was taking place at Promise Lodge. A very, very good book, a little different than what I'm used to reading in Amish fiction, but then that's what's fun about reading is that nothing is the same. You don't want things to be the same. You want things to have a little bit more flavor when you're in, in um, enjoying a lot of books. And that's that's why I like that one. The next one I read was Stalker by Faye Kellerman. I think this is book number 12 in the um, uh, Lena Decker, Peter Lazarus series. It might just be called Decker slash Lazarus, but Rena is his wife. Peter Decker is the detective. Um, in this book, he is now a um, he's now a lieutenant. So, for the first eleven or so books, his partner was Marge, and now Marge has a new partner because Steve, excuse me, because Peter has a promotion. But the book is not about Peter, Marge, or any of their cases. Actually, it's more so about his daughter Cindy who in the previous book decided that she wanted to leave college and become a cop herself. And so this book takes place nine months after um, the previous book. And I'm, I'm drawing a blank on the previous book. Um, so now Cindy has been through the police academy. She's nine months into... Um, she's nine months into her rookie year as a police officer. And one of the things that happens is a woman's body was found and it turned out that there was eventually another body found and somehow or another these bodies being found were tied into Cindy because things were kind of getting a little weird for her and she wasn't quite sure what was going on as far as um, the possibility that she might have been might be being stalked might be being weird, weird phrase so the book focused on Cindy and not only that but her relationship with her father and even a romantic relationship that she was considering during the time that she was dealing with the difficulties with the apparent stalker so um, I started reading this uh, series again because I have the newest book which maybe like book 20 or something like that for review in February or March and I read the first eight or nine books in this series years ago um, but now I want to finish catching up on the series so that when um, when it rolls around to next year I'm fully caught up so I can do that book review then the next book I read was His Pretend Amish Bride. It was the second Amish fiction book. As I said a few moments ago, I read two Amish fiction books last week. And this was really, really a sweet story. Now, I, I've already done the video review of this book, so I'll, I'm going to be kind of redundant here for a few minutes by repeating things that you may have already heard in that video. And basically, it was about a young man and he had a camel farm and he produced camel milk well he had a farm he he produced camel milk as well as cow's milk and it seemed as if his cow his camel milk was tainted so his his business and his livelihood was uh in jeopardy and what and then the the other character her name is priscilla by the way the other character um she recently had her heart broken by her beau, whose name was David. I mean, Jacob. I don't know why I said David. His name was Jacob, and he broke her heart. And so she's dealing with a broken heart. And um, at one point, she's at the little dairy farm or store where the, the primary character, I, I want to say his name, but for some reason I can't, um, that happens when I get on camera. I get extremely nervous. So anyway, um, he's being approached by someone 
who wants to know about the camel business and the fact that someone thinks that his milk is tainted and he becomes tongue-tied. And so what she does is she starts speaking for him and for the benefit of what he uh, what he offers in the in the milk that he sells and someone mistakenly thought that she was his wife and he let that um he let that assumption go through and meanwhile her parents are pressuring her as far as what she's going to do and they want her to get back together with jacob so it's a uh, not really a love triangle just pressure from her parents and now she really likes this other person, but she begins to see that he's holding himself back for some reason. And I can't tell you what that reason is because when I talk about things in books, I don't. I only go up to maybe the fourth or fifth chapter, and I think anything beyond that would be a spoiler. So he has his reasons for holding back as far as how he feels about her. Um, it was a very, very sweet story. Um, and like I said, I've already done the video review of that one. I did another video video review of um, My Only Child, but this book doesn't come out until I think November 2nd, so I'm holding back the review for right now. And this book was, uh, and again, this there'll be some redundancy when you, if you watch that other video next week. Um, but basically a woman goes into labor and she is pregnant with twins and she wakes up from surgery and her husband is acting a certain way and the doctors are acting a certain way and then she talks her mother comes into the picture and we find out what happened was not only did she lose one of the babies in delivery but she also had to have a c-section and um this was especially tragic of course losing a baby was tragic all of all on its own but the extra layer of it being tragic was from the age of i think nine years old she decided she wanted five children and her husband who loved her dearly supported her idea of them having a huge family so now two things happen in this book the first thing is that she has to be told that she can no longer bear children. Then she also has to be told that she lost her child. So she has two tragedies to deal with right away while being a new mother and having the hormones that come with being a new mother. And what happened in this story, we, we see right away that there was a catch when it comes to her relationship with her mother and that was its own drama so while that played out the story would go back and forth in time to the current family of three now and her mother when her mother was um younger and and how it affects the primary character's life now and so she starts to investigate international adoption because she's determined to have this big family one way or another so that was a really, really good emotional literary fiction slash women's fiction book. Um, and like I said, the review for that will go up in just a few days because today is the 26th. So it'll go up in about a week. Um, the next one I read was the one before my, by Miranda Smith. Now this was a good, good psychological thriller. And I do intend on making a video review for this book. I just haven't had time to and in this book uh, a woman pretty much gave up everything where she lived her job her friends and agreed to marry somebody I think his name was Cooper I don't remember her name right now um, and she's happy with him but she starts to be plagued by someone who thinks Cooper killed her daughter years ago so basically there was a young woman that Cooper dated when he was, I believe, in college and the girl turned up missing and eventually her body was found. And so the, the girl's mother, and I believe it's nine years later in the, at this point in the story, um, she believes that um, he was responsible for her daughter's death. So if, if it's the last thing she, she'll do, 
she won't let that marriage take place. So the, the, the primary protagonist has to deal with the suspicion that's hanging over his head, even though it takes a long time in the book for her to even discover that this this suspicion occurs. So I'm be, that's all I can really say on it because I have not written a review yet, but it was a really good psychological thriller. And I have that for a blog tour, I think November 3rd or November 4th. Then I read The Girl Who Never Came Home by Nicole Trope. Wow, this was a really good and very, very sad historical fiction book. Um, basically, it started off with uh, families sending their children to the country during the Blitz in the early 1900s um, in order for them to be safe from any bombs that might be dropped since uh, there was a lot going on with the war at that time. And so the girl is happy with her placement. And on the train, I think it's on the train. I'm not sure, I'm pretty sure it's the train, but she meets somebody, the train or the bus, probably the bus. And this person took, took a special place in her heart. And I think they were 11 years old or so at the time, nine, 10, you know, very young age. And so she was happy with her placement. He was not happy with his placement. Um, the families that took them in were entirely different from each other. So the stress and chaos that happened in his life didn't happen for her at that time. Well, the story then shifts to now when a man, okay, I'm just going to shut my office door because hubby turned on the TV in the living room. I don't want any copyright strike. Give me, give me a moment. Okay, so the story shifts to the now where an old man is watching some kind of news flash on TV and in the process he has a stroke. So when his daughter comes to bring him food, which is something, and he's in his 70s by the way, which is something she did on a regular, day, pretty much a daily basis, she discovers that her father had suffered a stroke and so in so doing he, he lost his speech and she takes his wallet home to protect you know to keep his his uh, that valuable safe while her father is recovering in the hospital and when she for some reason she looks in the wallet and she sees a picture of a woman that she doesn't recognize and so the story goes back and forth to the early late 1930s early 1940s when the man whose name was Stevie during the wartime, but for now, I mean, as an, as an adult, as an old man, his name is Dick, I think Dick or Dickie. Um, and um, the, the readers are now trying to see what is the connection to the wartime and the old man now? And why is the book called The Girl Without a Name? And um, this is a, review, a book that I just finished, uh, I think, late last night. No, this is The Girl Who Never Came Home. Wait a minute. This is The the Girl Without a Name. I'm sorry. Why is the book called A Girl Without a Name? I wanted to look at my spreadsheet really quickly because I wanted to make sure to call that right because the other book I read was The Girl Who Never Came Home. So by both of them starting with The Girl, I did not want to confuse you on that one. So that book was so good that I, I fell asleep yesterday evening and I woke up about 12.30 and next thing I know it was 4 in the morning and I had read um, The Girl Without a Name from beginning to end. Just I read straight through it. Um, it was that good. I, I worked on my, I think I was working on my diamond painting while I was listening to that and I just I couldn't stop and next thing I know I'm I'm at the end of the book so it was a really good book very very deep very emotional um what was interesting is and it it didn't come out to the end of the book but I feel comfortable saying it is he experienced war 
um, when he got to be an adult, he went to war, and he was experiencing PTSD, but at that time in history, PTSD was not diagnosed. And so that plays into what the drama that's happening while he's recovering from the stroke in present day. So that was a very, very, very good book. I, I really, really liked it. Um, I found it very, like very emotional. The art, the author's name is Suzanne Goldring, by the way. And every historical fiction I have read by her has always been top of the line. And this one is no different. And if I didn't say it earlier, The Girl Who Never Came Home was by Nicole Trope. And I've read a few of her books, and her books are always top of the line. So I, I, I had some um, good reading days right after coming out of my near reading drought. I say near reading drought because I never stopped reading. I just was not reading more than a book every two or three days instead of two or three books a day. So now I'm reading The Disinclined Bride. I think I'm only maybe 15 or 20 percent into it. So I it wouldn't even I can tell you about it a little bit. Is um, a man is under a, a viscount uh, is under the thumb of his father, and he wants freedom. And he wants to get away from the oppression of his father. So he agrees to marry somebody who's uh, part of the wedding price or marriage price would get him out of the debt of his father and allow him to set up his own household and further his own household. Well, she, meanwhile, the bride, is kind of forced to marry him. There's no you know, no real aggression or anything, but she doesn't have much choice when her brother pretty much decides that she's going to get married. So she gets married, and I'm just at the point in the story that I, there was a funny line. She she said something rather funny, and he's trying to get to know her, and he said, oh my goodness, she, she has a sense of humor. Stupid, She's not stupid because stupid people can't make jokes or something along that line. So I thought that was that was kind of a funny line um, in a historical fiction because oh histo yeah historical romance I guess. So that so that's where I'm at in that book. Now what else is going on in my life? Um, this channel is changing a little bit. I'm calling it Robin Loves Reading and all the things and just instead of just Robin Loves Reading. So I've changed that. Um, I, I wanted to keep Robin Loves Reading in my channel title because um, because hopefully reading will, will be the primary part of this channel. Um, of, and Well, see, I'm kind of waffling right now as I say reading will be the primary part of the channel because the reading right now is probably only 10 or 15 percent of the channel because now I'm live streaming I'm doing diamond painting right now you see me working on my jigsaw puzzle and I got contacted by two companies to represent their products on my channel one of which is arriving today and then I got a new diamond painting so I'm doing some unboxings and then stretch it out a little bit more i have more diamond paintings coming today so there'll be more unboxings so um that's pretty much where my energy has been going um and then i started coloring again and i'm loving that i'm absolutely loving coloring um and i want to do two types of coloring. One is some of the Jade Summer books I bought are either patterns, are flowers. One is called 100 Swirls. I want to do that type of coloring just for the sake of relaxation, but I also want to get more into line art and, and reacquaint myself with the skill of doing line art because um, it's been so long since I have colored anything with serious consistency that my I feel that my skill level is like a, a C minus at best right now. So um, I wanted to sit down and in my planner actually write down say three books that I want to color out of 
and even if I have to hunt down tutorials or uh, color schemes or color palettes or something just to get myself into coloring more. I also plan on trying to use um, a new product. Um, trying to oh, I don't remember where I put that shade. If you see my arm, I still have my nightgown on. Sorry, guys. Um, uh, I want to learn how to use the Arteza Twi markers. I went to use them in something and didn't like them right away. So I want I want to do that. Another thing I'd like to do this week is I got um, this palette. I'll show you really quickly since it's right here. I got this Karen Dash palette a Karen Dash palette and I got it for my Neo Color 2's so I plan on playing around with that so now that I so so that's coloring uh, of course reading and blogging that's that's a, that's a necessary thing that I'll be doing um, the diamond painting that I kitted on my videos on live stream last night and then the diamond painting that's coming today that I'm going to be featuring on my channel and then the unboxings so I, I just I have a lot um, going but I'm, I'm, I'm just doing everything on the top of my head and I think I'd like to sit down with my planner and actually start planning some of the things that I I want to do and another thing is I am woefully behind on Animal Crossing so my daughter's boyfriend gave me a fabulous suggestion he said just uh, time tra travel to when I stop playing and play for about an hour each day um, and then time travel forward until I get caught up and I think I'm going to do that because I'm missing pumpkin season I may not celebrate holidays but I certainly love fall so I um, I have to I have to make time for Animal Crossing and I, I just haven't done that so that's what's going on in my life. Um, my daughter's been staying at a boyfriend's, so I haven't seen my grandkids for about five days, the two babies. I miss them dreadfully so. But uh, she does send me pictures. Either she sends me pictures every day or we video chat pretty much every day. Um, I did call my oldest daughter yesterday because it's been a few days since we talked and sometimes we talk every day and then sometimes three or four days go before we end up having time to talk again so um, she left me a message last night so I've got to give her a call I want to call my sister one of two of my sisters in particular I have five but there's two that I really want to touch base with so I've got to I've got to get on the horn and touch base with those two girls and um that's what I want to do with regard to that so I'm not I'm about halfway through um I'm looking at the clock it's 33 minutes my time for sorting out a puzzle is about an hour um like I said I sort by shape when I start off and then I progress to color but it's going to be interesting with the old-fashioned look of this puzzle to see how I managed to pull colors out but for a 750 piece puzzle I have a feeling that it, it will go kind of quickly but who knows it just depends on when my packages come um, and how much time I spend on my other hobbies um, now I, I say the word hobby so I'm going to shift to something that's been on my mind heavily and that is incorporating at least two more hobbies into my schedule and if I do this I, I just I, I really will need a planner it's my oldest daughter that I meant I just mentioned that I want to call um, she crochets so and my sister crochets and even Ariana crochets even though Ari hasn't crocheted in quite some time so I'd like to um, get some yarn and work on a blanket and afghan so um, you know I know how I know the stitches and whatnot I just have to get some 
some help on the best place to choose yarn like if I buy yarn online um, so I kind of want to do that and then last year at this time I said I wanted to try to cross stitch or needlepoint and I didn't get into it so I, I'm, I'm thinking along that line of getting my hands on some digging into my container that's under one of my tables in my office I'm just going to, to so I can kind of wrap up the video I'm just going to look for the edge pieces and maybe two more handfuls and then I'll, I'll wrap up this video so um, oh I lost my oh I did buy a couple of cross stitch kits very very small you know bite size kits or snack size kits whatever you want to call them and I, I, I kind of want to, I, I kind of think that I would like to fit that in. Not for the channel, by the way. Just something that I'm sitting in my recliner, rocking in my recliner, listening to an audiobook, and doing, engaging in another hobby. So I'm thinking about that. Um, other things going on, as I mentioned, I have, uh, it, this week I should probably be getting a hold of maybe seven or eight more diamond paintings now ups did just ring the door but hubby knows i'm recording so i don't know if i've already gotten a package in the last couple of minutes since the doorbell rang but uh i'm expecting four from dreamer designs one from the company that i'll be uh, featuring on my channel um one from New Homie, one from Everyday Deals, and I believe one from Treasure Studio Arts. My plan is to, to familiarize myself with at least one diamond painting from several different companies in order to see what I like, uh, how the drills are, how the canvases are, and uh, if it's going to be a company I buy from going forward. I do have a friend who bought some from AliExpress, but that I haven't checked them out yet because I'll probably be doing a lot of the diamond painting on my channel. At least hopefully I will be. And I don't want to embark on any uh, stolen images. And I'll give you an example. There was something on Amazon yesterday that was a puzzle that I have hanging in my office. And that's a Charles Wysocki puzzle. And Charles Wysocki is a brand is a brand name artist. And so I know that that diamond painting I saw on Amazon is stolen art. So um, I'm trying to be cautious of where I purchase from, so that I'm not, you know, using something on my channel that's not a legitimately licensed piece. So I. I I'm trying to expose myself to as many video channels, video YouTubers that I can find, or talking to Shaleen and, and getting her advice, and just making sure that I stay, you know, to the point where the artists that do the work get the credit they deserve for the work that they do. Um, I now that I have started doing diamond painting you know whenever you do something you know the expression big brother is watching you know whenever you do something your Facebook feed is full of it so now that I'm diamond painting there are so many companies coming up in my feed but I'm not jumping to any of those other than the ones that I've named and the company like new homie and um, Everyday Deals, I saw that on a channel, so I feel comfortable giving them a try. There is another one, I think it's BTSKE, that I would like to try. Um, I probably will be buying one from them today. I just haven't had the time to do it since I've made that decision. So I will pick pick up, pick up one from them. And then, oh, the other thing is, I bought a diamond painting book. I, I don't remember the name of it, but it's a log book. So I got the digital version of it. If I'm able to edit in my data for the all the diamond paintings that I have and that I will be doing and the ones that I will be getting, 
then I'll use that. If not, I'll buy the physical book because I'd like to be able to log. Um, I'd like to be able to log every diamond painting I have. I kind of do that with jigsaw puzzles. I log them, and um, I want to. I want to be able to do that with the diamond paintings. So I'm going to finish going through the, these last four bins here, four containers here. But I didn't want to make this video too, too long. Um, so that's about it for now. Um, you'll see me again really soon. I've got a couple of audio, uh, video book reviews to make. I have an unboxing to do. And then I have yet another unboxing to do this evening. So I'll be back with a lot more. But I want to thank you for your time. Bye-bye.